Electrodynamics is a section in physics that deals with electricity, magnetism, mechanical energy or movement, and the relationship between these. In this section, we'll be looking at generators and motors, and these are devices that put these principles to practice. We will be able to see how electrical energy is converted into mechanical energy, and vice versa. So let's look at them in more detail. A common question that you can be asked is energy conversion. And remember, energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed from one form to another. So for generators, we take mechanical or kinetic energy and transform it into electrical energy. And for motors, you can see that it's the opposite. So we take electrical energy and we convert it into or transform it into mechanical energy. It's often confusing when you see a question or a diagram and you don't know or you're not sure if you're dealing with a generator or a motor. So this is how you recognize the difference. If you're looking at a generator, you're probably looking at something that has a light bulb or an appliance or a resistor or even a voltmeter or like you see over here, a galvanometer attached. So what this does, this galvanometer, is it measures or it detects the induced EMF and therefore the induced current. You will see a light bulb attached because remember, we're converting mechanical energy into electrical energy. So diagrams often show a light bulb to illustrate that we have converted that spinning, kinetic, mechanical energy into electrical energy. They may also mention that they are rotating the coil or the armature. They may even show a handle or an axle being rotated. All of these point to a generator. Motors, on the other hand, do have a power source. So for a DC motor, it will be a battery, as you can see over here. For an AC motor, it will be an AC power source, as you can see as illustrated by the little sinusoidal wave, the sine wave over here. So let's see if you can identify if these are generators or motors. Number one, this, because it has the light bulb attached, is a generator. You see there's no power source. This one over here, if you look carefully, that R, that symbol R in the squiggly line, that's a resistor. Do you see a power source being attached? A DC power source, a battery, or an AC power source? No, but we do see a circuit component, a resistor, which will oppose the flow of current. So this is a generator again. Now in this one, number three, I do see a DC power supply. I see a battery. So we know we're going to be converting electrical energy into mechanical or kinetic energy, which will be the rotation of this coil over here. It'll end up rotating clockwise according to this diagram. And therefore, this is a motor, electrical energy to mechanical energy. Now, I mentioned that this coil or this armature will rotate clockwise. How can you figure this out if they didn't indicate it on the diagram? How do you know which way the current will flow? How do you know which way the force will act on the coil or the armature? We need to use our hands. I've summarized over here that if you are dealing with a generator, you use your right hand. It's called the right hand rule. If you're dealing with a motor, you use your left hand. It's called the left hand rule. The fingers mean the same thing, whether you're working with a motor or a generator. And I will go through this in the next video. Just note that when we're working with a generator, we are usually looking for the direction of the current. And if you think about it, it makes sense because remember, mechanical energy is being converted or transformed into electrical energy. We are inducing or creating a current in the quill. So we want to know which direction that quill is flowing. So for generators, we usually use our right hand to determine which way the current is flowing in the quill. For motors, this is obviously different. Remember, it's technically the opposite. We are converting or transforming from electrical energy into mechanical energy. So there's already a current flowing through the quill. We already know the direction of the current, but we want to know which way is this quill going to turn. Remember, we're converting it into kinetic or mechanical energy. So we use our left hand to figure out the force on the sides of the quill to determine which way it's going to rotate or turn. Another very common question that you will be asked is what principle does a generator or a motor work on or operate on? For generators, it works on the principle of electromagnetic induction. And you need to think back to grade 11 when we did Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. The principle that a motor works on is called the motor effect. 
Now, students often get confused when they see two different generators and one of them have rings like that look like this. They're called slip rings. And the other one has a ring that looks like this. It's called a split ring. Students sometimes think that one represents a generator while the other one represents a motor. This is not true. Remember, to tell the difference between a generator and a motor, you need to go back a few minutes in my video about those other differences we discussed. If you see something like this with the slip rings and then you see something else like this with the split ring, both of those could be generators or both of those could be motors. Those components and changing those components, what that does is it converts either a generator or a motor from an AC generator to a DC generator or AC motor to a DC motor. I said it's a structural component that makes an AC machine different from a DC machine. So whether you see a diagram of a motor or a generator, if it has slip rings, like you can see over here, two slip rings, that represents an AC machine. So we get AC generators. AC generators induce AC current. That is current that changes direction every half rotation. And an AC motor will make use of an AC power source. Okay, so AC motor, AC generator, both of those will have slip rings. A DC motor and a DC generator will make use of a split ring. That is one ring that has a split in the middle like this. You can clearly see the difference between slip rings and split rings. So whether we are speaking about a DC generator, so that is a generator where the current that is induced flows in one direction, DC generator, or if we're talking about a DC motor, so that is a motor that uses a DC power source like a battery, we will see the split ring. So here's an example of a AC generator. We know it's a generator because they tell me that I'm manually or mechanically rotating the coil. So it's mechanical energy being converted into electrical energy. You see slip rings over there. So we know, okay, cool. Slip rings, AC generator. Yeah, we have a DC generator. Again, it's a generator because they're showing how I'm mechanically rotating the coil. And I know it's DC because of the split rings. To summarize, generators, mechanical energy to electrical energy. A current is induced, an EMF is induced, and we can figure out the direction of that current by using our right hand, the right hand rule. Motor, it's the other way around. It takes electrical energy and converts it to mechanical energy. Motors convert that electrical energy into a force that is mechanical energy. And we can use our left hand rule to work out the direction of that force. Is it up? Is it down? Does it cause the coil to rotate anti-clockwise or clockwise? In the next video, I'm going to go over generators in more detail as well as motors in a separate video in more detail. Take a look at my description for more information on these videos.